Qatar, thwack, thwack. Chunks of rubber fly off the track and smack the windshield as the speed indicator shows 160 miles per hour no damage, though, and I continue to follow race driver Giacomo Barry into the braking zone, paddling away at the dual clutch transmission, Zyeen, pop pop, Zyeen pop pop, through fifth gear, fourth, third, exhaust crackling. Easing off the mighty brakes, we turn hard right in the sticky fireless grip. Then from the apex to beyond the exit, the throttle helps to direct the nose, the chassis is always on alert to the imminence of oversteer. This is the 2016 Lamborghini Huracan LP5802, the new rear-wheel drive variant in the Huracan lineup. On sale now with delivery starting in February, it's lighter, about 73 pounds. Slightly less powerful, and less expensive, $199,800 plus $4,795 in charges and penalties, then it's all-wheel drive Horkin LP6104 Stablemate. To preserve the hierarchy among models, the LP5802's 5.2-liter V10 has been recalibrated to put out 572 horsepower. 30 horsepower less than the LP6104. Yet the 5802 still dashes from 0 to 60 miles per hour in roughly 3.2 seconds and touches 199 miles per hour, and its 40 colon 60 front to rear weight distribution is couple of percentage points better. Unlike the previous generation Gallardo LP5502 Balboni which essentially decoupled the all-wheel drive system to achieve rear-only traction, the LP5802 was specially developed alongside the rear-drive work and Super Trufio used in Lamborghini's single-make racing series. It has specially formulated driving modes and steering rates, stiffer suspension, and Pirelli P0 tires. Our car wore available 24530ZR20 front and 3530ZR20 rear rubber, with a distinct compound, structure, and tread design to yield sharper turn and response. Large rear intakes in front and unique tail lights further distinguish the LP5802 from the LP6104. Whereas the LP6104 clocks faster laps, it sometimes feels robotic and is prone to understeer. On the other hand, at the Los El International Circuit, the 3.3 mile, 16 turn course 15 miles north of the huge construction site otherwise known as Doha, the LP5802 exhibits a caffeinated, bright eyed quality like the student who always asks for extra credit. We could easily induce oversteer, correct it, and continue on our merry, storming way. And even on Los Ailes Pit Road, which looked almost identical to the one at Circuit de la Sarda, the V10 strep throat growl authenticated our achievement. Completing these hot laps required cunning and reflexes and we managed it without a slurping turbocharger or unduly influential electronics. Wait a minute. Had I really driven the newest Lamborghini on a racetrack in Qatar? Fantasies come true on this secondary peninsula of 4,247 square miles that juts from the vast Arabian Peninsula into the Persian Gulf. At the start of World War II, Doha's 12,000 inhabitants lived in fly-infested, mud-brick houses and longed for the good old days of pearl diving. Today, after oil and gas development, native Qataris now number about 225,000, with another 1.5 million or so European and American managers, English-speaking Filipinos working in hospitality, and Pakistanis and suit and knees holding shovels and loading bricks by hand onto flatbed trucks. Qataris live in glass towers and behind walls of villas, most of which affect postmodern Arabic style in the same way that new buildings in Santa Fe affect the Pueblo vernacular. Encountering a perfumed Qatari in his long white thob in the lobby of the Four Seasons, 
I learned not to expect acknowledgement. Otherwise, Doha has a familiar feeling down to the McDonald's inside the city center mall. And traffic looks like that of West Los Angeles except for the lack of Teslas and Priuses and the abundance of land cruisers. Qatar is where young Prince Ling who loves cars can decide to come to America and buy an NHR 18. That's how Khalid bin Hamid Al Thani was dubbed Drag Racing's patron chic in 2009. Taking its name from the Qataris cheer of Go Team Maroon, a reference to the maroon and white national flag, Al Anabi Racing spent lavishly to support Alan Johnson Racing. The combination won three top fuel championships but few hearts. I know they were getting a lot of heat from the fans, said the sports legendary Don the Snake Prodhom. It didn't put a smile on my face and really didn't do anything for NHRA. If he was spending the $50 million on me, I'd feel a little different about it. Sheik Khalid pulled support from Al Anabi Racing just before the 2015 season. Yet his sporting pursuits were only stuck in neutral. On June 23, having heard of the Pikes Peak International Hill climb for the first time, he called up race chairman Tom Osborne asking to participate. As if he'd rubbed a magic lantern, his wish was granted. He flew in the next day and brought his folks, Osborne told a local newspaper. By folks he meant a full retinue who bombed through Colorado Springs in Porsches. Honda had obtained the pace car status for the new Acura NSX, but Sheik Khalid followed about three minutes behind in his Porsche 918 Spider, which had no roll cage or, as competitor Alex Lloyd observed, the satch package that lightens the car significantly. If you were a track guy that would be the package you would absolutely have. Asked about the circumstances behind Sheik Khalid's exhibition run, Peak Executive Director Megan Leatham explained in an email, he was not an official competitor of the event but was more of a sweep vehicle, demonstration run. Naturally, I hoped to learn what terms had led to Sheik Khalid's sweeping debut, but Leatham wrote, we don't want to comment on this any further. In September. Sheik Khalid reappeared in the news after a reported street trace between a Ferrari La Ferrari and Porsche 911 GT3 ended with smoke coming from the Ferrari's engine bay in a Beverly Hills driveway. When police arrived, Sheik Khalid denied being the driver. And besides, he claimed diplomatic immunity. Subsequently, the Ferrari disappeared, a private jet, said to be registered in Bermuda arrived in Vancouver, British Columbia. Sheik Khalid was traced to a hotel there. Qatar has produced other motorsports figures, but Sheik Khalid's prodigality has even managed to overshadow countryman Nasser al adiyah who in 2015 won his second Dakar rally. On my first night in Doha, I strolled along the promenade past the Museum of Islamic Art which is fronted by a large sculptural representation of Adala, the traditional Bedouin coffee pot. This well-lit white vessel makes a strange sight in the same view as the Doha Tower, 46 stories of what French architect Jean Nouvelle calls, ahem, fully assumed virility. Closer to Al Jazeera Tower, a roar went up on Cornish Street. A Mustang and Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8 took off from the stoplight, with the SUV winning by a nose. It reminded me that Sheik Khalid had started street tracing at age 15, perhaps right here on this Sykes Lane Boulevard. Nowadays, Al Anabi Racing is active in the Arabian Drag Racing League's event staged at the Qatar Racing Club facility just beyond Doha's industrial area. Coming up that weekend was the National Day 4x4 and stunt driving event. It would send up big clouds of tire smoke in tribute to Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed Al Thani's 1878 unification of Qatari tribes. Doha now made sense for the press launch of the LP5802. What an automotive culture, drags, drifting, sand buggies. And of course track days at Los Ale are all within 30 minutes of the Cornish.
Anyone with a hankering could go to Lamborghini Doha, located in Almuft Plaza. First opened in 2004, the sales point was upgraded in 2007. Automobili Lamborghini CEO Stefan Winkelmann stood by at the ceremony as dealer principal Sheikh Abdulrahman bin Hamad bin Mohammed Al Thani said, Lamborghini remains the epitome of performance, exclusivity, and luxury, and Qatar is one of the most dynamic and wealthy countries in the Middle East. Your title here. In fact, the brand is well represented on the Arabian Peninsula and in the Gulf states. Besides Doha, there are showrooms in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Kuwait, Bahrain, and Oman. Saudi Arabia has three. On the second night of my stay, Winkleman, who is reportedly stepping down as Lamborghini CEO to assume a position at Audi's Quattro division, presided during dinner at the world's largest Nabu, located on a man-made spit extending into Doha Bay. He said that during his decade plus at the helm he's visited all those locations short of Musket, Oman. When Winkleman is back at headquarters in Santiago de Bolognese, he samples the latest prototypes. As such, he had a small hand in development of the LP5802. I'm not an extreme driver, I'm the fastest of the slow, he said, extolling the new car's controllability, rawness, and excitement. He acknowledged Lamborghini's brand characteristics include naturally aspirated engines, extreme design, and all-wheel drive. We are the only super sports car manufacturer that is doing four-wheel drive cars. But this doesn't mean we're unable to do what the others are doing, and to do it even better. Indeed, the LP5802 drives into a corner on the edge of Chef Nabu Matsuiza's sushi knife, points the way out like a Vizsla hunting dog, and delivers big grins during counter staring. The Ferrari 488 GTB and McLaren 570S make more power with smaller, turbocharged V8S, but the boost can be overwhelming, and they lack the V10's thrilling, higher shriek. On the mean streets of Beverly Hills or Main Street of Lozale, the new Lambo strikes its own sweet note. 2016 Lamborghini Hork and LP5802 specifications on sale, now price, $204,595 engine, 5.2 liters 40 valve dock V10 572 horsepower at 8,000 revolutions per minute. 398 lbft at 6500 revolutions per minute transmission colon 7 speed dual clutch automatic layout 2 door 2 passenger mid engine rwd coupe pa mileage 1520 seconds mile per gallon city slash highway estate telex wxh 175.6 by 75.7 by 45.9 in wheelbase, 103.1 in weight, 3062 pounds, dry 060 miles per hour, 3.2 seconds, a state top speed, 199 miles per hour Lamborghini LP5802, First drive pause clip info related share mu 0 o'clock slash 133 full screen.